Therapy Chat Podcast, episode 346. This is the Therapy Chat Podcast with Laura Reagan, LCSWC. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. And now, here's your host, Laura Reagan, LCSWC. This week's episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, the number one rated electronic health record system available today. With live telephone support seven days a week, it's clear why Therapy Notes is rated 4.9 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot and has a 5-star rating on Google. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note-taking, and telehealth incredibly easy. And now, for all you prescribers out there... Therapy Notes is proudly introducing ePrescribe. Use coupon code CHAT or click the link in the show notes to get two free months at therapynotes.com. This episode is sponsored by The Receptionist for iPad. It's the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of practitioners across the country. Sign up for a 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also receive a $25 Amazon gift card. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. I'm your host, Laura Reagan, and I cannot believe that summer's coming to an end. As you listen to this, it's the beginning of September. And the most exciting thing about that for me is that we are resuming new episodes of Therapy Chat. I've loved bringing some of my favorite past episodes that you may have missed over the past few months to your awareness, but it's time for some new stuff, and I'm really excited to kick it off today. And there are some other things coming up later this month that I am so excited about some of which I'll tell you about now and some I won't be able to tell you until a couple weeks from now. But today, let's start with focusing on today. I have a returning guest, someone who was on Therapy Chat in 2019, Chris McDonald. Chris McDonald is a holistic licensed therapist, 200 hour registered yoga teacher and a holistic provider in Garner, North Carolina. Chris is also host of the Holistic Counseling Podcast, and she specializes in treating anxiety, depression, trauma, and grief in young adults experiencing life transitions in her practice. She incorporates yoga, mindfulness, meditation, and brain spotting into treatment. Woman after my own heart. Chris also offers therapy for therapists, and she published a book, Holistic Self-Care for Counselors. So if you heard our episode Our interview back in 2019, she talked about her book and about holistic self-care for therapists. And we're going to talk more about it today because you can never have too much holistic self-care as far as I'm concerned. Chris launched her podcast, The Holistic Counseling Podcast, in April 2021 to help mental health therapists learn how to integrate holistic strategies into treatment and how to build a holistic counseling practice. Her favorite holistic daily routines include yoga and meditation. And Chris was so generous to come and give a special presentation to my Trauma Therapist Network community earlier this month or the month of August, which was really wonderful. People loved it. And I'm so grateful to her for sharing her time with us that way. So I think you're going to enjoy hearing from Chris and some of the ways that she incorporates holistic methods into her self-care practice for herself and the way she shares those with her clients and how it looks in her practice. So a couple other things I'm really excited about that are coming up that I want you to know about before we dive into listening to today's episode. One is if you listen to Therapy Chat, you know how passionate I am about sexual trauma and helping people heal from sexual trauma. That's how I started in this field 20 years ago. It's been a topic that's been covered on Therapy Chat in the past. Next week, we're going to have a very special guest who I've talked about in the past on the podcast, but pronounced her name incorrectly. Zabi Yamasaki is going to be on next week, and she specializes in sexual trauma as well. She's not a therapist, 
but she teaches about sexual trauma and she's a yoga teacher. And I just absolutely loved our conversation. And I'm sure that you will be so inspired. She has a new book out. So I can't wait for you to hear about that. And while we're talking about sexual trauma, you might have heard me say here on Therapy Chat recently or in seen it in the show notes that together with Erica Shershon, LMFT, who was another previous guest, I'm creating a course for survivors of sexual trauma that is focused on healing sexual trauma from the bottom up. You know, we always talk about bottom up here on Therapy Chat. And the course that we're co-creating is all about working with somatic symptoms and working somatically with emotional symptoms, trauma symptoms. So if you're interested in learning more about the course, which is going on sale in mid-September 2022, there's two ways to find out about it. One is it's going to go out to everybody on my email list. But the other way is to sign up for Erica's email list at healingsexualtrauma.com. And if you do, you will be able to receive a free ebook that she created. I have nothing to do with her ebook. She put this together and it's called The Many Ways to Ground and it's an amazing resource. So you can find out about the course through me by signing up for my email list or if you're already on it, but you also can get that free ebook if you sign up for Erica's list and you'll get notified when the course goes on sale that way too. And again, her website is healingsexualtrauma.com and you just go down on that page to where it says contact and put in your email information and she will send you the ebook, which is a fabulous resource. So let's not take another minute talking about what's ahead. Let's get right into my conversation with Chris McDonald and Look in the show notes for a link to our 2019 interview as well. For now, I want to thank you for listening to Therapy Chat. I'm so grateful for you. You know, I mentioned it already in August, but Therapy Chat just celebrated seven years as a podcast and it's more popular than ever. I'm just extremely grateful to everyone for listening um, this month. August, we are finishing on a high note with our highest number of downloads ever. Right now we're 3,000 above the um, highest previous number. And hopefully, since there's one more day in August, today's the 30th, <laughs> hopefully we'll finish a little bit higher than that. I can't wait to tell you. I'll probably post about it on social media. So thank you all for your support. Every download number represents somebody who's listening. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that you listen and that you find something in therapy chat that is useful to you. And I'm grateful that I can do it. I'm thankful to my sponsors for making that possible. And, but again, it wouldn't happen without you listeners. So you are the reason for this and I'm so grateful for you. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. I'm your host, Laura Reagan, and today I'm very excited to be speaking with a returning guest, Chris McDonald, LMHC. Chris, thank you so much for coming back to Therapy Chat today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be back. Yeah, I'm so happy. There's a lot that's gone on since we last talked. You now have a busy podcast. and Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I want to hear all about what you're doing, but let's start off by just you telling our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm a licensed therapist outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm having trouble remembering to say my uh, my whole practice now is virtual because <laughs> I'm usually say I have an office in Raleigh, not anymore. So I've converted to all virtual practice this year and I have a small group practice with two other clinicians. I also am host of the Holistic Counseling Podcast, which we're going on a little over a year now. So that's been amazing and very fun. And I've been able to connect with lots of holistic practitioners around the world. And I'm working now to build my holistic community because one of the things that keeps coming up is how isolating it can be to, to be a holistic counselor and that we don't always have our own community and it's not accepted everywhere. So that's one thing we're working on in this group. Yeah. So. I wonder how you find that in North Carolina is I know Raleigh, I know what that area is like, but I know the state being from Virginia, I know the state yes. of North Carolina has a lot of 
different, you know, demographics in terms of people's absolutely different places. Yeah. Values and beliefs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely different depending on where you live, but, but that's the thing is I have holistic, what are called holistic happy hours. So we get together on zoom once a month, or I'm doing an in-person one like next week and we just gather and everybody has different things they contribute. We talk about holistic strategies and whatever else they want to do to socialize and get together so they can connect with other like-minded individuals. And, and most people, are like, I don't know anyone else like me that, you know, does Reiki and does tarot cards or all these other things that are outside of the box therapies. And that's what the Holistic Counseling Podcast is about is, is being able to uplevel your practice to incorporate these other strategies and being able to be more open-minded in treatment that maybe traditional treatment is not for everybody. Right. You know, not everyone who comes through the door is seeking, you know, to just, just do like talk therapy with cognitive behavioral therapy Mm -hmm. techniques or whatever. So there's a lot of different experiences that clients bring into the work that if we're not open to hearing about then we're shutting down part of their culture. Yeah. And and sometimes it's that people have been in therapy a long time and they've hit a wall and they can't Mm -hmm. get any further in their healing. And so that's when a lot of times they'll come to me in my practice too, because I do more of the holistic and, and I always tell them I'm not your typical psychotherapist because I, you know, I use yoga in, in sessions. And since last I talked to you, I got my yoga certification. So that was something I never expected to do, but it's one of those life things that I realized how passionate I am about that. And you know, I do meditation with clients, mindfulness. So when I was in person, I'd bring in the essential oils. If they have them at home, we'll talk about central oils or, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about sleep, spirituality that may come up. So all those non-traditional things that not every therapist talks about. Yeah. And crystals. Crystals. Yes. How could I forget? I saw your black tourmaline. <laughs> you <should Yes>. <laughs> yes. I love the crystals. Which I learned about from you last time we talked. That's right. That's right. Awesome. So, so uh, to that end, I'm curious, which yoga certification did you do? Is it yoga teacher training or is it like a yoga therapy certification? I know people will want to know. Yeah, of course. This is called subtle yoga. And the reason I picked this, I researched like crazy, but I wanted one that was geared towards behavioral health professionals because well, well, number one, I have back issues. So I can't do a lot of the more difficult yoga trainings. I just was very afraid I wouldn't make it through, but I found subtle yoga, which is based in Asheville, North Carolina. And it's more about gentle yoga and it's not about fit yoga. It's not about getting in shape. It's about calming the nervous system for anxiety or with depression, we learn how to use energizing poses, breath, mudras, different things like that to help with increasing energy and motivation for depressed clients. But it's all like very simple, easy to use movements. We do from seated to standing poses. There's some that we can do on the mat. I'm particular about who I do mat work with because I'm all virtual. So so it's much more difficult, but I do that with some clients, especially those that are more experienced with yoga too. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing about that. Oh, it's amazing. I love it so much. Yeah. I'm trained in life force yoga level. Oh, I took some of that too. Yes. Yeah. It sounds somewhat similar and I loved it too. I I definitely want to do more training. With Amy Weintraub. mm -hmm. In 2018, I went to um, do the level one intensive in the Bahamas, which was like pretty much a win-win. And, um, yes. <laughs> and then of course, you know, next thing, you know, there's the pandemic I had been kind of procrastinating on doing more. And then, you know, I got to go back to it because I love that work. Yes. Yeah. I went to the, I just went to the weekend training for that in Yogaville, which is by the way, if you haven't been to Yogaville, that's a great place to go for a retreat. It's wonderful. It's in Virginia, but yeah, that's where I did the life force yoga. Amy Weintraub told me that she said Yogaville is my soul home. Did she say that? Yeah, it's wonderful. It's just such a nice getaway. But there's online trainings, by the way, too. So for like subtle yoga, you can do it online, too, if if you don't live in North Carolina. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, I know people will be wondering about that. So thanks for sharing. So let's get into talking about holistic self care, because, you know, before we even started recording, you and I were saying how both of us are feeling very activated today, but not Absolutely. just today by 
you know, news that affects us and our clients that can be very dysregulating to the nervous system. It, it has been for me. And me too. yeah, and I know for our clients, because, you know, even earlier this week, some clients were talking about this subject, which doesn't even matter which subject it is, because by the time this airs, it'll be something else too. many other things that will be affecting everyone. But How do you, and I think that this is something that anyone listening can relate to, how do you work with your nervous system and help yourself, help yourself not just stay regulated, but return to being regulated throughout a given day, whether working with clients or not? Like, and let's even just start off with talking about kind of your perspective on that idea. I think that is such an essential part of being a therapist. It's our imperative, right? That we ethically have to take care of ourselves in order to effectively treat clients. Because if we're dysregulated and not paying any attention, then we're not going to be as effective. And clients can pick up our energy. A hundred percent. We're all over the place. So the more regulated we can be, and of course there comes that co-regulation with our nervous system, and that's going to help them to be more regulated too. So that, that of course is more incentive for us to try to work, make sure we're working on ourselves. And I think it's important to not just wait till the weekend or wait for vacation that, like you said, this has to be a daily intentional practice. And it's so important to incorporate different parts of yourself with this. And, but determine what works for you, because what works for me may not work for you. So what can work with your schedule? What can work with your interest? And holistic can be so many different things. It's not just yoga. There's so many different parts you can do to figure out how to best take care of yourself. But self-care, and I think you and I talked about this before too, is it's not just massages or going on a retreat to Yogaville. There's small things you can do daily to help yourself stay regulated. I think tuning in first, just like we teach clients, we got to develop that awareness. So where am I right now? Am I in that sympathetic response? How do I feel in my body? Or am I in shutdown? That dorsal vague, yeah. Can you say a little more about even like if someone is listening, maybe a newer counselor or just someone who's never thought about this or anybody who's listening who's not even in the field of mental health, you know, what would be some clues from our body that we're in sympathetic activation? So it can be several different things. So if we talk about the emotional state, so we might be more of that anxiety, but it could be anger, Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we can be with that fight or flight. There can be a lot of that tension. I know sometimes I can actually feel my heart, my heart beating more. And remember, this is all a response in our body to keep us safe. Because of course, this was helpful when there was a saber toothed tiger hunting outside of our cave. But now when we're in this constant state, that's when it's not healthy for us. And we need to get our bodies back to that homeostasis, which is that more settled nervous system, that calmer state. So knowing when you're going to be activated, of course, it's going to be different for everybody, the physiological response, the emotional response. What is that like? I find a lot of people I work with usually have one that they go to if it's more sympathetic or is it more of the shutdown, like with depression? or dissociation, most people can get stuck in one of those. And that's where the problems can come because then you're going to have more physical problems too, especially with long-term could be lead to heart issues, digestive issues, migraines, all that. So yeah, the, there's the emotional side with sympathetic. There's the physical side that can come up and, and just knowing what are those signs for me and really paying attention to that noticing. Yeah. So today when, um, well, last night for me, I started reading the headlines. I hadn't looked at the news all day Yeah. and I, that was on purpose. And I read the headlines and I found myself getting more and more anxious and feeling more and more need to read more. I got to know what's happening. Let me check a different news site. Let me check a different Mm -hmm. news site. My heart was racing And then I was like irritable and I was snapping at my husband and, you know, I was kind of alternately aware that I was triggered and caught up in it and not, not really able to stop it. And then we got into a big argument (laughs) and wanted to get away from each other, which is like flight, right? Flight. So fight, fight was the argument. And then flight, we wanted to get away from each other. Right. Hmm. And then start over today from a calm place. And then I heard the today's news and I was like, I just didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to know. And so to me, that's flight. Again, I'm like, get away from this or avoid. 
And also because I, because I was thinking I have to get through my day. I have a lot of things I'm doing today. And I know if I go allow myself to go into this, I will, I will feel like I'll be so activated that I will shut down and I won't be able to function because it's very triggering for me. So, so then I was more trying to stay calm and stay away from taking in the information, but I felt my heart racing. I could just feel it racing. So you know, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like a mixed state, both of Mm -hmm. not really feeling the emotion, but my body having the sympathetic reaction of the heart race. And the behavior you mentioned, that's the other pieces. What is the behavior? You know, it was interesting because one day I, we were getting groceries and we brought them home and I dropped the cottage cheese on the floor and all over. And my husband was just like, what are you doing? And I just flipped that. And I'm not usually a snappy mm-hmm. person. But then I realized what led up to that. I was in so much back pain that I was just hurrying and not taking my time. And I was not even aware of my own activation with that. My nervous system was all off, but I wasn't even tuned in that. I was like, oh, that was my irritability. <laughs> right. Looking back on it. So sometimes we're not even aware, even as therapists, we can just right. like, oh, wait a second. Let me rewind. What just happened? Yeah. And that's a beautiful example. I had terrible pain in my shoulders and neck last night too. And it was after a long day of work. And so I was in pain. I was upset. I was anxious and angry. All of those things were happening. And I kept kind of going up and down from being like, I'm upset. And then just, you know, coming back to like, but, you know, trying to soothe myself sort of stay calm. And then, you know, it just, But then he was triggering me and I was triggering him. And that's where we just ended up. I know some people hate that word triggering, but it's, I don't know what else to call it. It it sparks, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the reactivity. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the reason why I'm saying this and why you're talking about yours is so people can recognize it within themselves, what it really sounds like. It feels like when Mm -hmm. that happens. And then you named something about dropping the cottage cheese. That's we get clumsy too when we're in this activated state because we're not yep. really as present. No, I mean, my only thought was, let me get this done as quick as I can so I can go put the heating pad on my back. Yeah. You know, I wasn't there. I was not being focused on the present moment and just that it takes, and I think sometimes with pain, it takes your front of, front of your brain offline sometimes too. It's just trying to get yourself in that uh, more regulated state too. Yeah. So this is on top of just, this is like us personally outside of our work day. Right. Mm. And then on top of that, there's when you sit with people throughout a day, I feel like as we do our sessions with clients, especially for those of us who are trauma, trauma therapists, and especially those of us who are trauma therapists, who are trauma survivors. Yes. And most you know, of our clients are bringing in trauma, even if we don't consider ourselves trauma therapists. So true. So we sit immobilized in our chair. And especially if we're on video, stare at a screen. Yeah. Not even getting up as much to move around like you would if you were in an office, at least not for me, because I would normally get up from my chair, I'd walk down the hallway, greet the client. You know, we talk a little, then we walk back to the office together and we get settled in there. And there's the energy between the two. I miss that. But also, you know, you can feel the energy between the two of you virtually as well, of course. So what do you think about that? How we're sitting with people yes, and what's happening with our nervous systems throughout the day? I think that's the hard part because we got to hold that space for clients. And, and I, I had this thought the other day because something happened and I was, something happened in my family and I had to one minute before your next session, Right. Okay. How how do we hold space for ourselves? So I have to put that, I call it the shelf in my mind. Okay. I know this is there. I know I got to address this, but let me just put it there for now. Compartmentalizing, I guess you can call that and focus back. And of course that it was still kind of creeping as I'm dealing with, but then I'm still trying to get myself more present. So I use grounding. Okay. Let me notice my feet on the floor. Let me just feel if the floor is soft or hard wiggle my toes, get myself back, back in my body, noticing that chair beneath me, feeling the texture of that, all of those sensory kind of grounding strategies. And, you know, they've done research too, that just noticing your feet on the floor can calm the amygdala. It tells it, Mm. okay, I'm okay here, right? I'm safe. Where are my hands? How are my hands? So it's that interceptive awareness. Where am I in my space and time with my body? What is my body feeling and tuning in? But that just the grounding itself can be calming. I found with clients to do that. 
It's hard. <laughs> Not gonna lie. It's really hard when we have so many things coming at us. We have our personal lives, we got our professional lives and to, to balance that, right. So that we're regulated so that we can be the best that we can be with our clients. And, but first is that awareness, right. Noticing where you are. And let's say you are in sympathetic. I know you said sitting all day. I can't sit all day with my clients. <laughs> For me, I got to get up. And that's why I love, that's where, you know, so my, it's more of the trauma-informed yoga. I didn't mention that as well. It is trauma-informed. Mm -hmm. And that's really taking the time to minimize triggers for clients and making it feel comfortable. And, and we can't say safe because we don't know if it's always going to feel safe, but trying to make it as most comfortable for them as we can and trying to, to minimize some of those potential triggers and in our cues that we say with yoga and with sympathetic activation, one of the things that I found so helpful. I think every therapist needs to know that we have to have releases for that. And and I've done this with clients too, is, is just kind of standing up and just starting to shake. So if you take your hand right now, your right hand, just, just see if you can shake it and then shake your right arm and then move on to your left hand, left arm. And we're just shaking it. And you can bring it, get creative, go in the air and shake. And if you're standing or you can do it, I guess you can do it sitting, your arm, leg, feet, shake it off and you can bounce. It feels a little crazy, a little childish, but you're getting out the sympathetic activation. And then once you're done shaking, just stop and notice that interoceptive awareness. What do I feel? You might feel a little buzzy, but that's how we can get the, the frontal cortex, right? The front of our brain back online too, because it starts from the bottom up with the bottom up processing. So we have to do something physical, especially let's say that you're on that scale one to 10 of 10 is the worst on that said scale. And you're just hard for me to focus. That's when you need to be doing something too. And hopefully before then too, that it gets that high. But, you know, I've noticed that at the end of the day for therapists too, that to shake that off, shake off the day, what is a way to shake it off and, and release is, is so helpful. Yeah. So I took our conversation, just, I went down, you go tuning in, you go, if you're in that sympathetic and I just went with it, but what would be, so what you just described is to shake off the sympathetic activation. So when you're in that anxious fight or flight right. mm -hmm. state, you know, you're feeling that really, you know, frenetic energy inside or the kind of racing thoughts, racing yes. heart, mm -hmm. anything like that. Will you say just for those who aren't really familiar, what it feels like for us in our mind and body when we, and maybe in thoughts and spirit too, what we feel when we're in that dorsal yeah. state. And I have um, a lot of clients because I, I work with trauma as well that have that shutdown, but I call it the shutdown valve. And that's when, and usually what happens with your nervous system is if you're in sympathetic response and what you're doing isn't working, your body shuts down. But I do, for some clients, that seems to be where they go right away is either dissociation. So they, they're not connected to the present moment. They're not feeling inside their body, um, feel like they're kind of outside their body at times. And, or it can be, they just feel like they can't talk and that they're just totally shut down emotionally, physically. They may not know where they are if it's true dissociation, which is very frightening. It's very scary for clients or anybody that experiences that. But for the shutdown too, I, um, I have clients now that I'm working with, with depression and it can be called the freeze response. So he's stuck in his life in every kind of way possible, but physically too, to get him to do anything motivation wise is really difficult in the freeze response. And that's what the shutdown can feel like. You, it, it feels like you can't get yourself moving because your your nervous system is shut down. Does right. Sense? Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. And I know that, you know, a lot of times when someone presents with depressive symptoms, the therapist often has a bunch of strategies they want to suggest. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Why don't you try this? Why don't you do that? Just do this one time. Just do that. And the person's like, I want to, but I can't. Yeah. And that's, that's what because, I hear all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because they're quote resistant or non-compliant. It's because something is blocking them from being able to move into an action oriented state. Yes, for sure. And it's so, so difficult to treat. And I think that can bring up a lot in the therapist as well. If you're treating someone like that, you feel like, what am I doing wrong? And, but that's where they are. And it's, it's extremely slow progress with someone like that and just recognizing that. And, and I, what I do too, with that is educating them about the nervous system. And this is your brain's way of protecting you. And if there was danger, it's thinking that you're still in danger. Because usually they're, usually it's people that have with trauma that experienced the most severe.
Running a group private practice has been a challenging and rewarding experience, and one thing that has made it so much easier is Therapy Notes. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note taking, and telehealth incredibly easy. If you're coming from another EHR, like I did, Therapy Notes makes the transition incredibly easy, importing your demographic data free of charge so you can get going right away. My team has found Therapy Notes very easy to learn, it's intuitive, the customer support is second to none. And that's one of the things that has kept me a Therapy Notes customer for several years now. Anytime I've needed to contact Therapy Notes for help with an issue I couldn't figure out on my own, I've been able to get through to someone and resolve the issue within 15 minutes, 99% of the time. Find out what more than 100,000 mental health professionals already know. Try Therapy Notes for two months absolutely free. Just click on the link in the show notes or enter the promo code chat at therapynotes.com. Therapists, has this ever happened to you? You're sitting with a client in the thick of a therapy session, fully focused on the important work that's happening between you and the client. Suddenly, 30 minutes into the session, from down the hall, you hear the door to your office suite open. You and your current client were the only people in the suite, but now someone has come in. You're distracted from your current client as your anxiety shoots through the roof. Is it your new client who's scheduled to meet with you in 30 minutes, but your current session has 20 more minutes to go and you don't want to interrupt this client's process to go check on who's there? Are they wandering through the suite looking for a receptionist? Is it a delivery person here to drop off a package that needs a signature? Are they about to come knocking on the therapy room door? Is it your neighbor from across the hall dropping off a piece of your mail that was left at their address? You hear the door close. Did they leave? This has happened to me so many times over the years. As I anxiously anticipated the session with the new client, I would worry they were feeling anxious or abandoned because they weren't greeted when they got to the office. Now you don't have to worry, and your clients can relax too, knowing that you have a discreet, stress-free way for them to check in when they arrive for their appointment. The receptionist for iPad is a simple, inexpensive way to allow your clients to discreetly check in, to notify providers of a patient's arrival, and to ensure your front lobby is stress-free. The software sends an immediate notification to the therapist when a client checks in and can even ask if any patient information has changed since their last visit. Sign up for a 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also receive a $25 Amazon gift card. Right. And we know, you know, we've heard about, people have heard about it on therapy chat before that dissociation is over a spectrum. So complete dissociation would be, you don't know where you are, who you are or anything that's going on around you, but there's, you know, levels along that spectrum where you are still making eye contact, you're still talking, but you don't feel like you're really here or things don't feel real. And oftentimes therapists don't know how to recognize that. So that's just something that I wanted to name. But how do you, how do you help people with coming? Because what I learned in life force yoga is like meeting the person where they are. Is, right. mm-hmm. You know, you don't come to them from this activated space. If they're in a shutdown space, you have to meet them at a lower energy right. level. So what do meet the mood? Yeah. What do you you have any suggestions for either the listener who's wants to help to get out of that when they're in that or therapists who work with people to help them in those situations? And one thing I learned was subtle yoga is, is of course, meeting the mood. So if they're anxious, we need to get them up, right? They have that energy, but with depression, we can start seated and sometimes even laying down. It's okay with that to, if they're comfortable laying on a mat or on that, because we, that's how we meet the mood too. And just, staying with them in that moment. And what I've done with clients who have really strong freeze response in that shutdown is to do some very slow, gentle movements just to, just to get some something moving. And one way is to do like joint rotations and just do them very slow, just taking your wrist, just do slow, mindful movement. And what people aren't used to, they're used to fitness. Oh, let's see how fast I can go. <laughs> Let me go. But that causes sympathetic response. That's why I'm um, using yoga and using it in a way that's slow, mindful is so helpful because that doesn't cause the sympathetic response and just using it, going, moving your wrists back and forth nice and slow. And then moving on to shoulders, some gentle shoulder rolls. And you can use the joint rotations with, you know, a torso roll, which means if you're in a seat leaning forward, just moving in wide circles in your seat, going down to the feet and doing ankle rolls. 
very slow movements. And it's difficult when getting people who are in shutdown to do exercises at home. But one thing I found effective is to set times for them. So when would be good for you to try this? And, and to do an experiment, can you try this for a week and we'll see how it goes. We'll reconvene next week and try this as an experiment and set it up that way. And like, for example, the one client worked with, we did, let's do the morning, we'll do this. And then the evening, you'll try this other one and go from there to practice. And it's very simple things that they don't have to, it's not like a long sequence or anything to remember. So here's two exercises. That's it to work yeah. on daily. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Does that, did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now going back to where you were saying first, it's tuning in. So <laughs> and then I didn't let you say anything else after oh, that. So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk all day, Laura. I know. Sure. So what do you do from that point? So for tuning in, as in helping the client tune in? Yeah. Like when okay. we were talking about like as a therapist, or a client. Or a client, yeah. Getting through the day. What's, you know, so the first step is tuning sure. in and checking. Are you in, you know, we kind of talked about sympathetic or dorsal vagal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Shut down. And am I at safe, that safe and rest and digest? We call that to the parasympathetic too. Is it the calm homeostasis state? And that is just, and I tell clients this too. I also work with therapists. So some, some of my therapists, I also help them with this to throughout the day to do check-ins to say, okay, let me check at lunch. So where, what is my energy? What is my emotion? And using that scale one to 10, like 10 is highly activated to one, not at all. So where am I with emotion, energy, overall sensation in the body, noticing, tuning in? Because that does take a lot of practice, especially people who, are, who aren't connected to their bodies as in trauma or aren't used to connecting and doing that a few times a day, spreading that out, even setting alarms to remind yourself with that, that helps increase that awareness. And, and that polyvagal ladder too, which you, I help, I think it helps as a visual. If you haven't seen that too, that that's something to check out online. It's just a ladder where you can look and see, okay, here's what each of the steps are. Where am I right now? Am I at safe and sound mode or am I more sympathetic? And, but again, knowing like we were talking before, what are my physical signs of sympathetic and dorsal, right? Or the dorsal is a shutdown or what is the behaviors? Where am I? What did I notice that I'm snapping at people? Am I more irritable? I'm sympathetic. And what are, and what are, what did I say? The behavior emotion. What was the other one? <laughs> I just blanked out. Anyway. Sensations. Sensations. And, yes. Yeah. That's it. Sensations. So noticing those things. And, and part of this too is, is the, the yoga I teach too, and, and which anyone can do is just that mindful yoga is all about interception. So let's say that I teach joint rotations and you can do this at home, just noticing after you do it, notice that wrist. How does that feel now? What are the sensations? Because that's not regular yoga, right? It can be more fast paced and you're not stopping. So it's always stopping about the interception and noticing what is your energy now that we did those two poses? What is your emotion? What sensation are you feeling in your legs? What you can do for yourself anytime you do any kind of movement or even a meditation. How do I feel before? How do I feel after? Is there a difference? Yeah, that mindful, mindful awareness. Yeah, yeah. And it's a skill that everybody can learn, even if somebody has been so dissociated that they're not really connected with their body at all. It can be a gradual process, but everybody can learn to get back in their body when they feel ready. Because we don't want to force people, of course, taking time, meeting their where they are one little step at a time. Thank you for saying that about not forcing people, because I think yes, some of us, of course. <laughs> yes. with the best of intentions, some of us but, therapists, we learn some new yeah. techniques and we go, oh, you just need to get grounded and get back in your body. You're ground you, now. <laughs> yeah. And you guide the person to feeling grounded and then they suddenly need to get out of their body again because it feels intolerable in their body. Yes, exactly. And so really knowing your client assessing where they are. And one thing I never do is like, first session, let's go. Let's do some yoga. <laughs> No, it's part of building that relationship. So they, they feel there's some level of trust that they feel okay with that. And the other part of that is, is never insisting somebody close their eyes because that's not trauma informed. Mm -hmm. So close your eyes, like for meditation, if you feel comfortable, if not, you can look at the ground, keep your eyes open, look at the ground with your eyes soft. It's totally fine. So that's part of trauma informed cues too. Just being aware of the, those things that could be triggered because some people closing their eyes is just too triggering. Yeah. And 
just to amplify that trauma sensitive approach yes or trauma informed is invitation and choice that's the word yes. and consent is paramount right mm-hmm. and not just consenting because you're quote telling them to do something and then they do it but you're inviting someone to explore and make a decision a choice if they want to do that or not yes and with trauma informed yoga too it is your the i guess the message to start is you can stop at any time giving them yeah. a agency with that. Exactly. And letting or, them know, we're going to do this 10 minutes, but you can always stop at any time. So they know how long it's going to be like, how long do I have to roll my shoulders? <laughs> how long is this going to last? So they right. know going in. Again, informed consent, right? You're telling yes. before someone is asked to agree to something, they're being told what they're being asked to agree to. Yes. Sometimes sure. we forget how important that is. When we just jump into like, I can fix this. Let me do some techniques now. Yes. Don't want to be what I know. (laughs) Over ambitious therapist. But again, anything we're talking about today is helpful for therapists too, and for their own regulation to being aware. And I think Laura too, if if it's okay, if I I talk a little bit about before sessions during and after. Yeah, please, please, please. So for, for me, for my body, I find I have to do some movement each morning. Even if it's only 10 minutes, I have to do some yoga, walk, something. So that kind of sets me up. That's that activating, right? Activating the nervous system. Because what we have to do with the nervous system is sometimes we got to stress it a little bit, activate it for it to come back down to and get us back to homeostasis. So movement for me helps a lot. You got to figure out what works for you, but figuring out some kind of routine. I know you've probably heard that before, and I know a lot of people talk about routine, but it's so essential to leave that space for yourself before sessions instead of go, 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 go the whole day. And yes, for therapists during the day, setting up breaks. I don't know how people do it. I had somebody I asked to be on my podcast. She said she works 12 hours a day without breaks. I, that boggles my mind. I can't even imagine. So I think just being kind to yourself with scheduling in some breaks, if you can. I know some people don't at some places, but figuring out what can you do so that I'll you just have say, those times. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but oh, I'll just say fine. to that, that many therapists will say that if I, if I take a break, I'm more exhausted than if I just don't take mm. a break. And I, I say that I think that's a message from, and I don't mean this in a shaming way, but it's in a message from within yourself that maybe the pace that you're keeping is too much for your nervous system. And if you, yes. could, you know, if you could turn those 12 sessions a day into five or six with more space in between, would you be more regulated overall? Exactly. More present. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. And doing some kind of breath work or grounding before you start even a moment before I see a client, I'll sometimes just put my feet on the floor, push my feet into the ground. Let me feel that tension and then release. And of course, Laura knows about my crystals and I got my essential oils on my desk that I use, figuring out what, what you want to have in your desk. And I think that's another thing to think about resort. We call that in brain spotting resourcing. So what do I have that I can see in front of me? That's calming, soothing, that tells the nervous system that's a safety cue. So I have a picture of a lighthouse here for us in North Carolina that they, it just soothes me because it reminds me of my beach time and memories and calm things. And I have a candle that flickers. It's one of those electric candles. So what can you put on your desk, your space that is soothing for you? It could be pictures of family, you know, if that's soothing for you, calming, whatever works. Oracle cards. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> All these holistic things. Yes. And of course, during the day too, I just want to, one other thing is, is making sure to have regular eating schedule. I think that's so, I hear people say they skip lunch. I don't know how you do that. I can't function if I don't eat. Me neither. But but that's important too, because it it may not feel like if you're sitting all day with sessions, but you're burning calories, you really need that energy for you to be at your best and making that a priority. I, what I do in my schedule is making sure to put lunchtime schedule it so people can't climb, can't schedule around that because there's no way I could function without that. Yeah. And your blood sugar. I can't even imagine. I mean, if you don't eat all day long, your blood sugar is going to plummet at some point and then yes. for me I, that's when I just I feel shaky I can't eat me too. Or I can't think I can't you know I can't I my I like I'll start crying <laughs> you know, just regulate. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and, and during sessions so again it's that tuning in of course it's hard as we're focusing on clients and being there but where am I in my body just quick check where am I um, and from an energetic standpoint, noticing, do you feel all of a sudden you're feeling their, their emotion 
sometimes that can attach to you too and saying to yourself, not my energy or asking, is this my energy? Is this my issue or, or emotion or is this the client's? And using your wise mind or intuitive self, and then they'll tell you, it'll say it's mine or yours. It's mine. So that's something I need to work on. Or if it's theirs, I send that back to them and with loving kindness. So noticing the energetic to where am I? Because I'm sure everybody that's a therapist has felt that, right? You start to feel like, whoa, what is happening? I'm starting to feel. Why am I getting a headache or nausea? Yes. Yes. And noticing that. And one thing in session that you can do is push your feet into the floor. They aren't going to know what you're doing. That can be a grounding too. Or just going back to noticing those feet on the floor. I like to activate my hamstrings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, it makes my, like I do it right now and it makes my body lift and my spine more straight. Yeah. I'm doing it now. I can feel it. (laughs) (laughs) Or pushing on your chair, right? Pushing. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. So that brings you back to yourself and can help shift the nervous system as well. But what do you do after, right? Client leaves. Maybe you still feel some of that emotion. So Laura, what do you do? I use like the, I think it's a Reiki technique. I've also heard people say it's a havening technique where you brush your arms off and your shoulders and hands to release the energy that you picked up during that session. Mm -hmm. Also try to get up, go to the bathroom, wash my hands, you know, and I've focus on feeling that water on my hands. And, you know, if one thing I've learned is to imagine like the water is washing off. Oh, that's nice. That story I just heard or that, you know, pain that I just witnessed, you know, so that, I mean, I want to be able to hold space, but I don't need to take it in and absorb it to myself. Yeah. So that's healthy too, to make sure you're not taking it. Cause if we take all that we hear, then you're not going to be mentally healthy. So just letting that go and, and flinging it. That's what I learned with Reiki training, just flinging that, which is, I don't know how to describe it for this, <laughs> not seeing people flinging it with your fingers, right? That quick motion. Yeah. And, go. It's and like pulling it, your thumb and yes. your fingertips and then like sort like, of forcefully yes. like letting yeah. it out. Like if there's yeah. a, a bug on you. <laughs> Yeah, flinging it. Um, but imagining too, using visualization, imagining any of that energy you don't want, because everything is energy, and energy goes where you tell it to go. So imagining that to go into the earth, and letting the earth be a great recycler of that, and to transform you into a beautiful thing, and standing up in mountain pose, which is just standing with your feet under your hips, externally rotate your hands forward, rolling your shoulders back, and just allowing. Imagine that the roots coming from the bottom of your feet into the earth and thinking about that energy going down through the feet, letting it go. You taught me that before. And I have taught that to so many have people you? who have felt it, found it really, really helpful. Yes, and I, That's a grounding strategy too. You know? Yeah. Especially if it's a heavy, heavy session, I go outside, take my shoes. Well, I usually keep my shoes off anyway and put my feet in the grass and feel yes the dirt and the cool grass and the earth below me. And I picture myself with rooting into the earth and letting that energy just go right out through my feet into the earth where it can be transformed into something possible, (laughs) positive. Yeah. 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 Or just uh, imagining an energy cord coming from the lower part of your spine, your tailbone, connecting into the earth, to the earth's core, connecting you, grounding you, centering you. Yes. The other thing I was going to mention too is at the end of the day is give yourself some time of silence, a moment of silence, just to stay centered to even that whoosh of release. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We hear a lot. We use a lot of our, our hearing and sometimes we just need that moment of just closing your eyes if that's comfortable for you, just centering you and doing whatever you need to do in that moment, but just allow that, that silence. And even if you have to use that visualization during that time to let go, to disconnect, it's so essential because making that transition from work to personal life is, is important to figure out, is that something you can do to have that silence before you become you again with your personal life? Makes sense. Yeah. And I love it because it's like that separation between, yes. you know, your identity as a therapist and just you, the human that you are. Yep. And I like to have a cue at the end of my day. Um, Well, I was having trouble as I converted to all back online of Mm -hmm. separating and stopping work. So I shut down my computer now. I shut the door to my office. 
And what I'll do is have a cue like music. I love music. So I'll turn some music to me that triggers my brain that, okay, work's done. And I say that in my mind now, I say work is done now. So I can't go back and email. (laughs) That one last email, right? Got to get it. I know. I love that. I love that. Like, and that's what I've been doing intuitively. Like once I'm done for the day and I go downstairs, I put on music. I'm like, where's the music? Where's the music? (laughs) Get the music now. (laughs) And then I, I, you know, as soon as the music starts, my, I feel my nervous system just settle. Music therapy is the best. It's so helpful. Or I listen to a podcast. I like, um, I listen to a fun one, like um, on the paranormal. (laughs) I love ghosts, ghost stories. So something that's totally not calculated. Yeah. So important to f- to find those cues that trigger your brain that, oh, okay, so this is over now. So I can let this go. Because I think the problem is that, and I think most therapists have this where there's that one client that kind of hangs out in your brain still, some unresolved things, or maybe that brought up some some feelings of like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing with this client. And yeah. So let yeah. Some of that go. I feel a big part of it is the way that our client's trauma activates our trauma that's unresolved within us. And, you know, I mean, it's, I work with complex trauma. That's my focus. So everyone I talk to has experienced many of the betrayals and rejections and abandonments and losses that I've experienced too. And so when I when one is sticking with me, I mean, I'm hearing all these stories, but why does one stand out? You know, it's not just because of them. It's because of what it's opening up within me that needs my attention. So I love, you know, Tara Brock always says, do a U-turn, turn back inward and go like, what's here? What's happening? Yeah. What's alive in me? Triggering some unresolved trauma for you or issue. Right. Some loss, some pain you know, some, some wound, some wound. You're so upset about what happened to them, but maybe it's because there was something in you that you haven't been ready to look at. And, you know, because everybody I'm sitting with all kinds of stuff has happened to. So why does one, you know, I just am amplifying that like one really gets to me. And then I'm like, what's this about? You know? Yeah. Really just that self-discovery to really reflect on that. Yeah. Well, Chris, this has been, again, so helpful and interesting. And I love talking about so many specific techniques because I think everyone needs it right now. Oh, gosh. Therapists or not. Wait, as much as we can get. So where can people find your book, your podcast, and if they wanted to work with you in North Carolina, where can people find you? My practice website is pathtohopecounseling.com. And there's actually a link on there too for therapist information too on there. Therapist support, I think it's called. And my my podcast is holisticcounselingpodcast.com. And my book, you should be able to get on Amazon. It's self-care for the counselor. So it's a holistic guide for helping professionals. So it has a lot of, what, some, not all that I talked about today, but a lot of what I talked about today was related to that. So yeah, I know there's more in there Lots than there. The, the things that you discussed, but yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again for returning to Therapy Chat. I loved talking with you. Thank you, Laura. This has been great. Thank you to Therapy Notes for sponsoring this week's episode. I do love Therapy Notes. It's such an asset to my business and makes my job as a practice owner and a therapist much easier. Try it today with no strings attached and see why everyone is switching to Therapy Notes, now featuring ePrescribe. Use coupon code CHAT or click the link in the show notes to get two free months at therapynotes.com. This episode is sponsored by the Receptionist for iPad. It's the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of practitioners across the country. Sign up for a 14-day free trial of the Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also receive a $25 Amazon gift card. Thank you for listening to Therapy Chat with your host, Laura Reagan, LCSWC. For more information, please visit therapychatpodcast.com 